We're in Edgewood Road, opposite KFC, the famous so-called, the so-called Halal KFC. We're in Edgewood Road. In the heart of West London, a group of friends set out a dower stall offering books and knowledge about Islam. The book that we mostly work with is uh, a brief understanding. But this friendly young man went on to die fighting jihad in Syria. It's now been claimed he was one of a notorious group of Brits known as the Beatles, who guarded Western hostages alongside Jihadi John. Jihadi John was from a, a small um, and tightly knit uh, group of young Islamic militants who dabbled both in the propagation of the religion and in acts of petty crime. Between 2011 and 2012, um, this appears to be a gang which moved uh, very seamlessly from the Edgware Road to Aleppo, Idlib and Raqqa. James Harkin is a journalist who's writing a book about the Islamic State kidnappings in Syria. He's investigated Mohammed Mwazi's links to West London. We haven't been able to independently verify his claims. One freed hostage told me that the, 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 the person um, who brutalised him was exactly the same kind of person that he met when he was in London taking shisha on the Edgware Road. That's how he identified him. An Edgware Road kind of a guy, a street guy, fashionable, um, probably involved in a gang and a subculture and looking for meaning and looking for purpose. Shukri Al Khalifi, who ran the Dawa stall, went to the same school as Mohammed Mwazi. He was part of a gang who was convicted for carrying out robberies in West London, in which their victims would be threatened with tasers. Freed hostages in Syria later reported that they too were assaulted with tasers. Al Khalifi left to fight in Syria when he was on bail for the robberies and supposed to be being monitored, but he's not the only one. The Department for Education has launched an investigation into how three former pupils, including Mwazi and El Khalifi from this same school, went on to join militants abroad. They may have been part of a wider group from West London of at least 12. It's understood Mwazi's network had aroused the suspicions of the security services and that he believed he was under surveillance. In an audio recording released today, Mwazi, in his own words, describes how he was questioned by an MI5 officer. He looked at me and he said, Hamid, I said, yes. He goes, what do you think of the 7-7? I said, man, what, what, innocent people have been, have, have died, man, what do you think? I think this is extremism. He said, okay. Well, then he started telling me, what do you think of 9-11? I, I told him, this is a wrong thing. What happened was wrong. You know, what, what, do, you want, what do you want to say? I, I, think, I think what happened is wrong. El Khalifi went on to be killed in Syria. It now seems apparent that he and Mwazi's West London network were already on the security services' radar. The question they are now facing is how they came to slip off it.